Hey friends, welcome back to another video. I'm so stoked for this one because I don't feel as if we've ever introduced Nick or his story or exactly how he came to know Jesus and had a relationship with him. I feel like we get a lot of questions about our faith. But now, today, Nick is gonna be it here. It is time to shine, ladies and gents. <laughs> Life is always better. I shared mine a few years back and obviously some things have changed. So if you wanted to get an update on that or another testimony video after like all the mental illness stuff, let us know if you wanna see that. Give a thumbs up to support Nick though, because this is not <laughs> an easy thing to do. Sharing your testimony is definitely something that takes courage and it takes boldness. And it's kind of hard to put your words together sometimes. Yeah, so sure. um, I just wanna, properly introduce this video. This is Nick, this is my husband, for those of you guys who are new to this channel. She's taken boys, we were sorry. both 22 years old and we dated long distance until we moved to the same state and got married. And so this is my husband's story. It's me, we're about to chat. We're gonna have a great time. All right, <laughs> let's get into it. Hey, what's going on friends? Uh, for those of you who are for the first time clicking on this video, maybe you've been to this channel before, maybe you haven't. Uh, my name is Nick and I have the honor and the privilege of doing so many different videos uh, on this channel with my wife, Chelsea. My story began in uh, the greatest state in the United States, as far as I'm concerned, that also hosts the greatest football team to ever play the game, the one, the only Florida Gators. I can hear and I can feel your steam uh, from your side of the camera. Please don't execute me. Uh, no, but I am a giant Florida fan. I actually grew up in the state of Florida in the north central part of the state. I had a great, great upbringing. I actually grew up on a pretty large piece of land in my family and I we used to grow blueberries. They actually still do, but since I moved here to Georgia, I can't really be as part, as much of a part of that in their lives as I once was. But I had a great upbringing and I really enjoyed uh, my life, my, my family. We went to church now and then, mostly on like Easter and sometimes for Christmas services. And, and that was really the extent of our, our church attendance and, and all that we did. However, I had grandparents in my life who were really, really adamant and they loved the Lord. They loved Jesus, they served Him. They were always at the church. Anytime the doors were open, they were always giving in, in different ways in which they could, either with their time or their finances, and really, really contributing to that part of that local body. I remember as I was growing up, I always had this inward fascination in me of why and what could cause such a devotion for an adult, for someone who's older, for really anyone uh, for, for that matter, to give their life to this cause. And that always really stuck with me in the back of my mind of, of someone giving their life as, as, a, as a real like living sacrifice is what scripture would say, but just for the cause of this purpose. And so I grew up always with that in the back of my head. And as I progressed in years and, and got older, um, into my preteen years, probably like 10, 11, 12, my grandmother really began to have conversations with me about wanting me to attend church with them, wanting me to go with them, or at least if I wouldn't go with them, I would at least go to a Sunday school gathering or something just to hear, just to see, just to be involved. And so uh, I did. I actually took her up on it and I went and I was involved and I started listening to different messages and just being a part of the Sunday school gatherings. I didn't really know anything. I didn't know nearly as much as some of the peers my age that were with me in the, in the church settings about the Bible, about God, about Jesus or what he did. I mean, everyone referred to him as the savior, but like I had no idea what that meant. And really, I thought Christianity was just this ideology that people followed and they tried to live their life and being a good person. I really thought that was the extent of it. It was a place that everyone gathered together and they were nice to each other and friends and like that real community humanistic bond. And 
I thought that was pretty much the the extent of of what church was and what Christianity is and who Jesus is and 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 yeah, and I really let it be that for me for so long. But then my grandma continued to press. My grandmother continued to press into my life and said, "Okay, now that you're going to these Sunday school gatherings, I would love to see you go into uh, what Southern Baptist called, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church, what Southern Baptist called at the time RAs, which was Royal Ambassadors. And so practically what it was is a bunch of younger uh, students getting together, mostly middle schoolers, and we would really have our own separate time away from the high school gathering, which was the standard youth group. And so I did that and uh, I listened to Bible stories and I would, um, you know, take on the challenges of making like five bucks here and there from memorizing like five or six different scriptures. And that was a really formative time in my, in my life and I loved it and I made so many new friends and we did so many cool things together. But I was still inwardly lost, broken, I didn't have hope and I, I just didn't really have any direction in my life. While that time was great, I was still attending church merely for the purpose of simply just going to hang out with friends and going to like the, the recreational side of the church, right? Where we would get on the merry-go-rounds and get in the swings and climb on the monkey bars and do all of those sorts of things. And it was fun and it was great and I, I loved it and I enjoyed it. It was about a year and a half later after that where I actually stepped into youth group. And this is where things really started to quickly take root and really, really change the course of my life for me in a, in a very significant way. So in the summer between my eighth grade year and my ninth grade year, really that bridge time between going from middle school to high school, really just got involved in some really, really stupid things. And because of this lack of direction that I had in my life and because of this lack of conviction and this lack of real meaning and, and purpose and hope, I really just began to do a lot of dumb things. I really got involved in um, drinking. I really got involved in trying to impress those around me. I was really heavily involved with girls and made lots of uh, stupid mistakes that really, really altered the course of my life. And, and I would say it was in that time where the switch really flipped for me. And I began to really inwardly think and say, okay, like I've done everything that people my age say is fun. I've done everything that they say is giving them joy and giving them peace, or maybe not, they're not saying it with their lips, but they're saying it with their life. And I just found for me that wasn't true. If anything, I had as a result of drinking and being involved um, sexually with girls and being involved with trying to impress other people, if anything, I found it just gave me more anxiety and it gave me more shame and it gave me more weight and it gave me more hurt. And I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it, I couldn't live with it, I couldn't stand the burden of having that go with me. And so I began seeking answers. I would ask friends, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Like, does this bother you? The fact that you're doing this and this doesn't seem right, something seems off here and no, it doesn't bother us. Those were really the, the answers that I was getting from people my age. But I knew in my heart that something was off, something was wrong, some, this, there had to be more to life than this. While I sought out those answers, God was directing me down a path that I had no idea uh, he would eventually take me down. But uh, I stepped into my ninth grade year. Uh, so I got through that summer and I stepped into my ninth grade year and I became a part of the youth group at my church. For a few weeks, probably you know three, four weeks, maybe a month or so, I sat and you know, I just kind of did the thing and went through the motions with them and listened and just tried to adapt to this new environment. And then I remember just being uh, sitting there one week on a Wednesday night. I remember sitting in the service and I remember exactly where I was sitting, the building that I was sitting in, the chair that I was sitting in. You could take me into that building today and I would know the exact chair. And I was right by the alleyway. There was a chair on the, or there was a set of chairs on the right side and there was a set of chairs on the left side. I was the fourth row back on this right section of chairs right by the aisle. And I remember the youth pastor, who's a very close friend to me still to this day, 
I remember the youth pastor teaching and, and giving a message. If you have a Bible or if you want to look at them for yourself, feel more than free to. This is from the book of Matthew and it's in chapter seven. It's a gospel account of the life of Jesus. That's what a gospel account is. So when you hear someone talk about the four gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all those are, are accounts of the life of Jesus. They're just telling you a story um, from four different viewpoints about what Jesus did. And so this is from Matthew's account and his gospel in the seventh chapter. And it's starting in the 24th verse. And it says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And so when I heard that scripture message being laid out in front of me, I really began to internally question some things that were going on in my life. But the biggest question that I was asking was, what is my life built on? What is my life built on? Is it built on sand or is it built on a rock that never moves? And I had to be honest with myself and answer this question and saying that my life was built on sand. I was chasing things that were shifting and moving and fleeting. And so I just really had to get honest with myself and be real and just be completely transparent and honest with God and with myself and just saying that, hey, my life at this point was built on sand. I was chasing things, I was doing things, I was being involved with things voluntarily all the while. It wasn't like I was being suckered into this or pressure to do this. It was stuff that I wanted to do. Honestly, I answered the question internally in that my life was built on something shaky. It was built on something that that is moving and crumbling and fading away and falling. And really, that's that's just what it was. That was being honest. No one builds a house, your house or your apartment or your dorm or whatever you're watching this from. Your house is not built on just a hill or a pile of sand. Your house is built on a concrete slab. It's a, it's a foundation, it doesn't move, it doesn't shake. But my life was not built on that. And my question to you would be, is your life built on that? Is your life built right now on a pile of sand that is shaking and moving and shifting and things are changing and, and it throws you out of rhythm and it throws you for a loop and you're just discombobulated and you don't know what's going to happen next. You feel anxiety, you feel upset, you feel internal grief and you just don't know what to think. So months go by and time goes by and I'm keeping this scripture in the back of my mind, always thinking about how to build my life on rock and I go and I try and be better and I try to disassociate myself with friends and with people who were participating and me steering down the wrong path. And I really try to change some things and become involved with the right friend groups. But still there was this void and there was this empty hole and this empty pit in me that just couldn't seem to be filled. And then that same week that I was really, really feeling those things deeply. I mean, it was just like a progression of those things. Um, and that same week that I was feeling those to like the, the level 10, I go to youth group just like I have been doing. And on a Wednesday night, nothing crazy, we get invited to go to a summer camp. And you know, I don't think much of it. I've never been to a summer camp before, so I just kind of blow it off. But then at the, at the very end of the night, my friend comes over to me, and I won't mention his name here, but he comes over to me and he asks me, and really he's really begging me to go. And he wants me to go, he wants to see me go. Now he has no idea of my spiritual condition. He just wants a roommate that he doesn't think is like a nerd. And so I think it over and I, I talk with my parents and I ask them if I can go to this summer camp. This friend can be my roommate and such. And they say, sure, yeah, we love that. You know, we think that'd be great. And so sure enough, uh, we pay for it and off I go to summer camp in July, late July of 2012 at this point. 
And so I get there and everything's good and we're having a blast. It's in um, North Carolina. It's actually on the campus. It used to be on the campus of Gardner Webb University in Boiling Springs, North Carolina. And so we get there and we go and we're having a blast and it's so much fun. And all the while I'm feeling this, just this weird stirring in me that something about these people, something about this place is just different, right? And so, you know, I, I go through the weeks or excuse me, I go through the nights and I'm listening to the messages and it's, it's great. And they're very, very powerful. The worship is powerful. And then the last night, being Thursday night comes around. I'm listening to this message and I'm hearing this preacher and I just feel like this is time. This is the time. This is the moment. This is divine appointment for me to be in this seat at this moment, at this time. This is the time for me to make a decision, not just to think of a concept, not to just try and be better, but to put my foot in the ground and make a decision, make a statement. And so the very end of this message comes and what this message pertains is the love of Jesus. This message is all about how a man named Jesus, the Christ, his, his last name is not Christ. A lot of people actually think that, but uh, Christ was actually a title and Christ meant the anointed one. And so I listened to this message and this preacher is telling me that I don't have to live with these burdens anymore. I don't have to live with these sins anymore. And that Christ came 2000 years ago. He lived a perfect life, a sinless life. And in this Bible, which I believe to be 100% front to back, the truth and the word breathed out by a God who loves me and who loves you so much more than we could ever either even fathom to imagine. And uh, I hear this message and I'm stirred to make a decision, to make a choice. And so at the very end, the minister, the preacher gives an invitation and he allows us to take a moment and pray and ask for salvation from the Lord. Ask him to not just come into our hearts, not just come into our minds, but to come into our lives and to change us from the inside out, to give us salvation, to give us eternal perspective and eternal hope for that when this life is finished, we will find new life in him. We will be eternally with him in a place called heaven, or really heaven is not just this magical wonderland mystery place, but it's simply the presence of God. We'll just be in the presence of God when we depart from this earth, if we are in Christ Jesus. And that was really what the preacher ended up saying. In, in short, he said that you're a sinner. You have messed up. You have done wrong. And, and I knew that. I knew that I had done wrong. I knew that I had made mistakes. I knew that I uh, was guilty. And he, he just explained so, so clearly and so vividly that um, it is nothing of human merit. It is nothing that a human can do. You cannot work your way to heaven. You cannot do enough good things. You cannot uh, give enough money. You cannot spend enough time. You cannot give enough or do enough service or acts or be a good person. Uh, as the great theologian and preacher uh, Kanye West says, uh, he says the road to hell is paved with, I'm a good person. And I would have to say that to you as well if we're being sincere and truthful, the road to hell is paved with, I'm a good person. And the reality is, is that we're not good people and I'm not a good person. Chelsea, if she was here, she would tell you that I am in and of myself, not a good person, but it is Christ who was the only good person. He was the only one who lived a sinless life. He is the only one who came and paid a price that you and I could never pay. You see, eternally and in this life, someone can pay the price for our sin. And we have two choices. It can either be us and we can pay that price and we can let God judge us based on our human merit as to if we are sinful or if we are cleansed. Whereas the Bible says we are all fallen short of his glory and there is not one who is righteous. But Christ knew and God knew that there was no way for mankind to obtain salvation and to be with him after this life ends. He knew the only way was to come to this earth and to die. 
And, and that's exactly what he ended up doing. And he didn't just die to die, but he died and he rose on the third day. And that's why us as Christians, we celebrate Easter. We just celebrated Palm Sunday. And that's why we celebrate Easter. Easter is uh, significant of the day that Christ rose out of the grave after three days uh, back to life. He, he beat hell, he defeated the grave, and now he lives and he still lives even now in this moment. Going back to my story, I made this decision to give my life to him. I decided to give my life to him, but also to let his life come to me. And I tell you, and I speak this honestly while trying my hardest in this moment to fight back tears, this is the single moment that changed my life forever. With tears streaming down my face, my heart just beating out of my chest as a young 14 year old who was broken who had made mistakes, who knew he was a sinner, uh, I gave my life to Christ and let him take my sin, give me a clean slate and a fresh start and a new beginning. And I've never been the same since. Do I still mess up? Of course I do. Do I still make mistakes? Of course I do. But is my heart different? And do I have hope? And do I have that heaviness? And do I have that weight and that shame and that guilt? No. Not at all, because Christ took that and he gave me a new beginning and he gives me a new beginning every single day, just like he wants to do for you. And so after this, I gave my life to ministry, to teach and to preach and to share the word, uh, to share the gospel that so radically changed me and so radically can change you. And hopefully that's what I've done here today. But before I go, I, I just don't think it would be right if I shared my story and this good news to you with, without giving you an opportunity to make a decision, without giving you an invitation to the Lord's table to make a decision, just like I did those years ago. And if that's you, and if this message, this video, if you're watching up to this point resonates with you, you've been feeling that weight and that burden and that heaviness and that guilt and shame, just doing those wrong things, maybe it's sexual, Maybe it's, maybe you've just been lying or lying to others, lying to yourself. Maybe you've just been doing things that no one sees and you've just been hiding things. What I'm here to tell you is that Christ wants to take that from you. Jesus wants to take that away from you and give you a new life and give you a new beginning and give you a fresh start and give you salvation, give you an eternal perspective. There is a real place called hell is what the Bible teaches. I, I it's, this is not my opinion. This is the word of God. This is what the Bible teaches. And I believe the Bible to be uh, the word of God. And so there is a real place called hell. And, and if we are not in Christ or if we are uh, being judged by God based on our own merit, we are pretty much uh, doomed to spend an eternity in a real place called hell. But God offers his hand and he offers his gift to you and to me of salvation through his son, Jesus. And that is the most beautiful thing ever. And, and so you may be asking yourself right now, well, how do, I, how do I have this life? How do I have this fresh start, this new beginning? How do I uh, give my life to Christ? How do I let him uh, come and, and, and dwell with me? How, do, how does one do this? I'll, I'll just tell you the way that I did it is I prayed. And I prayed a prayer after a preacher. Uh, the preacher spoke it and then I prayed it internally in my heart. There's nothing magical about me. There's nothing magical about the words or the prayer or the sequence of the wording or any of that. It's really just a posture between you and between God of, of you saying, hey, like I, I, I need you. I, I have been trying to do this on my own, but I need your salvation. I need your forgiveness. I need a fresh start and I want the eternal perspective of heaven. I want to know where I'm going when I die. And so if that's you right now, just frankly where you are, I would love for you to maybe just spend a moment with me here and reflect. And um, if that's you, I just want you to close your eyes and I want you to pray this after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm broken. And I know that without you, there is no hope. But Jesus, I want to trust you. And I want to live for you. I want a fresh start, a new beginning. And I want to live my life for you. 
Lord Jesus, would you forgive me of my sin? Would you take away my grief, my guilt, and my shame? And would you give me a new beginning? Save me right now in this moment, Jesus. I'm all yours. I'm all in. I will go wherever. I will do whatever. And I will be whoever you want me to be. This is my new beginning. I love you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Well, hey, if that's you and you just made that decision and you just prayed that prayer with me to receive Christ into your life, maybe for the first time, uh, then I just want you to do me a favor and leave a comment down below just so we can celebrate with you. And just so Chelsea and I can send you a message personally and we can also send you some resources that have been beneficial and helped us greatly in our walk with the Lord. And I hope that this message for those of you who are Christians has encouraged you. I hope it's challenged you to think about things uh, differently or think about things with an eternal perspective. For those of you, again, who are Christians, or maybe now for the first time you have just become a Christian, and uh, I just want to celebrate with you. I'm so happy for you, and you have no idea how this is going to radically change your life. Uh, I would challenge you to do uh, a few things. One, I would challenge you to get a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, there are so many different great ones. Personally, the two versions that I read out of is the ESV and the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible, and the English Standard Version. Those are two great ones. And then uh, also get involved with a local church. I hope that this encourages you. I hope that it blesses you. And I hope it challenges you in your life and in your mind and in your heart to think about things differently and to also spark a passion in you for others and uh, and help you to tell your story with boldness and with gratitude of what the Lord has done in, in your life and uh, what he can do in other people's lives. And remember, we don't go to church and we're not Christians because of what God can do for us. We, we are involved with the church and we glorify him and we worship him for what he has already done through his son, Jesus. Just know on behalf of myself and on behalf of Chelsea, we love you guys so much and you guys have blessed us in more ways than you even care to know. We are always here for you for anything that you need. So we hope that story encouraged those of you who watched through the whole video. And for those of you guys who just accepted the invitation to have a relationship with Jesus. We're so excited for you. We would love to engage in a conversation on Instagram or even in the comments down below. We would love to pray for you and give you any resources that we have that can allow you to continue in this mm -hmm. relationship and get the encouragement that you need, the resources that you need, because the amazing thing about having a relationship with Jesus is you're not doing it alone. There are so many people around the world, Amen. even Amen. in like other countries that are um, heavily persecuted for their faith. And that only kind of solidifies that body of believers in those areas. Mm -hmm. And I know during this really tough time of all of us kind of self isolating from one another, it, right. it can feel lonely. And we want you to know that there's a God who cares and loves you so, so much and mm -hmm. wants to have an, a personal relationship with you. And so we're just really glad that Mick got to share his story. And if you resonated or if you wanted any more conversation, please, please feel free to reach out to us. And we're just super, super stoked for you guys. But we don't want to take all of your time. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and end it here. But let us know if you wanna see anything else um, related to this subject moving forward. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. We'll see you next week. <laughs>